On the morning of January 11, 2017, a grieving mother stood in a crowded courtroom and looked her son's murderer in the face, and she said these words to him, I forgive you. The godly woman was Felicia Sanders, and the murderer was Dylan Roof. On January, uh, on June 17, 2015, Roof went into Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, and he murdered nine people in cold blood. He later confessed to the crime, he pled guilty to all of the charges, and he was convicted, and he rightly received uh, the death penalty as his sentence. Now, he's still on death row as of today, so his sentence has not been carried out. Um, but when when Miss Sanders and, and many other family members addressed Roof in that courtroom and they forgave him, the news media were enamored with their action. In fact, President Obama even came out and praised them for doing this. Um, and rightly so. Can you, can you imagine standing in front of the man who took something very precious from you and instead of seeking his harm, seeking his good. It's an incredible thing. Forgiveness is a hard act. By nature, every one of us prefers to hang on to hurts. Like a sick puppy found on a street, we, we have a way of nurturing our bitterness. We encourage it to take root in our hearts. We spend hours thinking about a single statement that someone made in passing, perhaps not even understanding the real motive behind it. And in some way, in some way, in a perverse way, that feels good to us. When Elihu addressed Job, he said, listen to this, the godless in heart cherish anger. That's Job 36, verse 13. That's a powerful statement. The godless do not dislike anger. They love it. The godless love anger. They cherish it, according to Elihu. Anger gives the godless purpose and meaning in life. It gives them energy. And the never-ending search of the godless is for something or someone to hate. They're looking for an object of their hatred and anger. This is prevalent in the mantra of our so-called woke movement of our time. The implementation of Marxist cultural theory, and that's what the woke movement is, thrives on anger every day. The search is on for the next person to cancel or the next statue to pull down. It is a movement driven by anger and hatred. Now listen, anger is not sinful as such. Uh, Christians are actually instructed, commanded to be angry and do not sin, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, and Psalm chapter 4, verse 4. Certain things should make you angry. You should be angry at idolatry. You should be angry at injustice. You should be angry at uh, racism. You should be angry when God is robbed of his glory. But listen to this. Righteous anger does not delight in sinful acts. Righteous anger does not delight in rioting and looting. Righteous anger does not delight when someone's name is slandered, no matter who it is. Righteous anger delights in justice, not revenge. And those are two different things. As a wise counselor, a friend of mine once said, righteous anger is energy that we use not to destroy ourselves, not to destroy others, but to destroy the problem. <sighs> Dear brothers and sisters, Christ calls upon you to exhibit righteous anger and forgiveness in your life. You find the strength to forgive a hard act, 
only by looking to Christ himself. Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 13 teaches us that. He died for you when you were still his enemy. Something to meditate on today. May God bless you. I'll see you next time.